This is the Show It Off podcast, encouraging you to show off your unique self, your true, messy, beautiful, perfectly imperfect self. This is about discovering and sharing your inner light with confidence. When we do this, everyone benefits. The law of oneness means any good we do for ourselves is doing good for all. I am Sarah Faye Schaff. I am a single mom who helps other single moms build a life they are proud of and happy in as I learn to do the same. After creating a successful confidence-building youth program for girls in California and using my 11 years experience as a yoga and meditation teacher, I am a confidence coach, helping women from here in Hawaii where I am living a simple island life with my daughter. Each Monday, this podcast serves up true stories and inspiring messages to support you on your journey to becoming shamelessly and unapologetically confident so you can show off your light, show off your authentic self, show off who you were born to be. This is the Show It Off podcast. Are you a single mama? Are you ready to change the experience of being a single mama? No longer do we have to be poor, stressed, exhausted, lonely, or unhealthy, working three jobs and barely ever seeing our kids. Nope, that may have been the way single mamas were doing things in the past, but we are a new generation of women and we have new resources at our fingertips. What if being a single mom looked like being in a village of sister friends, sharing expenses, supporting each other in childcare and household responsibilities, all while making lots of money and having a great balance of being present with your babies, but also using your mind and energy to doing work that you love. Sound impossible? Well, it's very possible. And I know this because I'm doing it myself right now. And I can show you how. I have built an online course with an interactive online community that includes modules like self-care 101, be your own boss, how to build community where you are right now, how to be happy as a single woman, dating as a single mama, and my personal favorite, you can do paperwork, navigating the legal side of being a single mama. This course is sold module by module for only $37 each, so you can pick and choose the modules depending on what your needs are right now. There are also free modules to help you with the process of leaving and up-leveling your mindset for success in all areas of your life, plus lots of one-on-one and group support. Does this make you excited? Do you want to join the empowered single single mama sisterhood? (laughs) Well, all you have to do is go to sarahfayshoff.com and enter your email. Then you will be put on a special list and I will invite you when the course goes public. And I will also give you free support right away. Look, being a single mama can seem impossibly hard, but that is because of the way we have been going about it. We can change that which we want to change in our lives. This can be the most empowering season of your entire life and you do not have to do it alone. So go to the site, the link is in the show notes and join the Empowered Single Mama Sisterhood today. Hello everybody. I am here with my dear friend, Rachel Starbrook, and I was just contemplating how I met her and we met because we have a shared love and passion for young girls to develop confidence and self-love. So when we met, it was with this amazing program that was putting on a week-long summer camp to help girls in San Jose, California to 
self-discover, self-love. And in the process, we became great friends. And man, that was many years ago now, but we've stayed connected. And I'm so excited because you all are going to be fed so much right now from her wisdom and her presence and her beauty and her voice. And here she is now. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> oh, I'm <laughs> smiling ear to ear. That was so kind. And um, I didn't expect you to actually bring up the girls stuff. And it was such a, um, it just sparked joy in me to remember and touch mm -hmm. into that part of me and that time in my life. So um, anyway, I'm really happy to be here with you and your amazing audience. And um, I just want to say hi to everyone listening. Um, my name is Rachel. I uh, live in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I work as a, a psychotherapist, a deep transformational coach. And one of the great loves of my current life is that I am a holding space trainer and facilitator, and I get to work with personal growth practitioners and healers of all kinds and really support them in their work and creating um, energetic spaces and containers that really enliven and nurture transformation and healing, which mm. I just love. So yeah, I'm wow. really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. That's super powerful um, resume there. And I mean, I've been teaching yoga for a little over 10 years and I have so meaning that means I have a lot of sister friends who are yoga teachers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I've seen, yeah, like the burnout that happens when um, facilitators give and give and give and give and give yes. and forget to take care, right, of themselves. Yes, I love so, that you brought that up. And then I do yeah. think, yeah, there's so many yoga teachers who um, have the opportunity to impact so many. And I love how kind of popular yoga is, right? Because it's such a benefit to people. And yes, you're absolutely right. When, when I see teachers kind of equating um, their, their value or their worth or their skill, kind of based on, yeah, this kind of never ending giving or like, how great can my sequence be? Or like, how right. great, you know, do my poses look or with all of this kind of, um, I guess what we could say doing, then yes, yes. Um, burnout happens. And it happens for therapists, for coaches, for body workers, for Reiki people, for, you know, for all of us, all of us healers yes. out there. Yeah. Which is why it's so awesome that you're doing what you're doing. I mean, I've been going to therapy on and off since I was five. And I've definitely sat there and been like, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Because mm. as a sensitive person, I'm feeling like <laughs> you're not quite like the the heart is there. And the obviously the intention because that of what they've spent their life doing. But that's a really humongous component of it that's um, really, as you know, really important. And how it ties into what we talk about on this show is it's really about self-love and letting go of that like martyrism that so many, especially women, I feel tend to take on. I mean, what would you say about that? Is that something that you've seen? Just that martyrism? Absolutely. Absolutely. Like I, I even wrote down in my notes for today, you know, it is such a radical act of self-love for us to begin to really believe and feel and embody that our presence is enough. Mm. That we don't have to constantly be doing, giving, creating, fixing, rescuing, right? Like that is just um, such a gear I see so many of us in and, and definitely women even more so, but really, you know, all of us living in North America and the Western world, like our confidence has been intrinsically kind of tied to results, right? Producing, right? Like how much can yes. we get done? How much can we create? What have we accomplished? What have we achieved? Um, and I'll say this maybe yeah. a few times, but there's nothing wrong with doing. So I really don't want to give doing a bad rap. <laughs> you know, I really don't. Like right. doing is absolutely necessary. And I guess where I see the really powerful possibility is creating more balance in that. Mm. Yep. Wow. I really, that hit home for me in my heart because 
I think also like I know that primarily um, the women who listen to this show are single moms. Mm -hmm. And so when I say to them something like, could you possibly do less? They're look at me like it's 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 a trigger because they would love to do less. Yet they're like wearing so many hats, which is why, you know, I always advocate sisterhood and like bringing in other mamas to help and really letting go of that need to do it all yes and I think that unless what you just said is like sink in that they don't have to be doing all the time to be enough they will never allow that sisterhood to come in and step in and and help exactly and I love that you use the word allow because it really Mm. is all about allowing um and I just want to kind of this might seem radical too, but I just want to invite anyone who's listening and any single mom out there or woman out there, um, you don't actually have to do less. So I'm just going to give full permission to keep doing what, uh, yeah, doesn't that feel good? Right. Like (laughs) you keep keep doing you boo, you know, but, um, (laughs) but what I offer is, um, maybe an exploration, a gentle exploration of where does the doing come from? Because we all have these like what I call like subconscious, unconscious, hidden, we could say agendas that are typically tied to like our self-worth and our value, right? So it's like, if I do this, then I'm good, then I'm lovable, then I'm successful, Mm -hmm. then I'm productive, then I'm strong, then I'm wise, then I'm, I mean, literally put any word you want, insert into that, right? Yep. Um, Mm -hmm. and I think that that is where we get to actually make a conscious choice. So not so much about doing, not doing, but like, how can we begin to actually let some of that go, um, and be more present as we're doing the doing. Wow. That's really solid, girl. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad it's resonating. <laughs> you never know. You're really bringing it. Oh, good, good, good. I love that because really, um, I mean, I know that right now um, my mantra is, am I being present right now? Mm-hmm. You know, just asking myself because, you know, the days go by fast and, you know, I'm watching my daughter grow and if I'm playing with her but also thinking about oh I should be doing this I should be doing that well there really is no point in me sitting there playing with her because I'm not being there with her so that's really been my practice lately and I love that you pose this question and especially the part about the gentle exploration because it's not about being hard on ourselves but just rather um, asking that question where where is this coming from yeah. Oh, wow. And it's, and it's, you know, um, it's really deep for most of us. And, and so as we begin to explore and maybe uncover and just kind of expand our awareness around this, I just invite a lot of just gentleness of like, yeah, you know, if we've been doing from a place of like, I want to be good, you know, for most of our life, like that's not just going to necessarily shift overnight, but what I want to assure people or just, you know, get people excited about is that, you know, as you are more present with your daughter or washing the dishes or even working, right, whatever you're doing, um, it's not just a gift to the other. And it is a humongous gift, you know, to the other, to our children, to our partners, to our friends, to our tribe. But we actually get to experience greater relaxation in our own self. Um, which really kind of allows us to do more ultimately and not burn out, right? If we're coming from a relaxed place and we're actually able to receive the moment, like receive the gifts of the moment, um, Mm -hmm. we actually turn on that like giving and receiving natural flow. Mm. I love that. And that comes back to that balance and being balancing also your feminine energy with your masculine energy. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I love that. 
Can you say that one more time? Because I'm taking notes and I would love to write that down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so um, as we become more present in the moment, and I'm happy to share some like actual tangible tips on how to do that. Um, oh, yes, please. Because I think we all think like, oh, I know how to be present, right? But it, sometimes we don't or we forget. And that's okay. Right. I do too all the time. Um, mm-hmm. But as we become more present, it's not just a gift to whoever we're with. But it actually allows us to relax and receive all of the gifts that are in the present moment, all that there is for us to receive, which ultimately puts us in that flow of giving and receiving and allows us to feel less tired, less burned out, you know, less fatigued, just less mentally fatigued. Mm, I love that, that concept of relaxing into the moment just gave me such a beautiful image of just kind of laying back and just being peaceful and how lovely is that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely and life can actually start to feel more that way um which is pretty amazing you know the more that we practice these presencing practices and i'm I've been practicing them a lot over the years, but, you know, even if I'm sitting with a client who's in like major distress, you know, or even Mm -hmm. if I'm with friends or with a partner and just how the world is right now, you know, it's like we can begin to, um, to just experience greater relaxation all the time, Mm. not disconnection, but just like relaxation. (sighs) Yeah. I just keep seeing the word ease. Mm Mm-hmm. And that kind of goes back to the allow, you know, the art of allowing and the ease of the flow. Oh, I love that. I've been trying to tell my daughter about that, um, the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. I feel like your little personality just like tries to make everything harder than it has to be, you know, and I'm like, oh, babe, please no. (laughs) Please know for us and you. <laughs> yeah, I'm on that team though too. Like I have a coach in my life who's like, ease, Rachel, ease. You know, <laughs> like she's screaming at me. <laughs> so I get it. I get it. And I, um, but I have so much compassion, you know, for the part of me that, that does that, you know, that like, because she just, mm-hmm. she just so wants to do a good job. You know, she just so wants to be good, you know? And yes. That's, that's okay too. Like, Yes. Okay. It's all okay. Yeah. yeah, she has perfectionist qualities indeed, which that that bone did not enter my mm. body at all. I'm always like, it's fine, it's good enough. <laughs> you know, and she's so perfect in her trying. And it's interesting. I love that you said that you have compassion for that because it's that same part of her that's like like gets furious at injustice. Mm. It's that same part of her that's going to like really be like, this is not accurate, actually, you know, and like speak up against those sort of um, things. And that's what's happening in the world right now. And it's just like, it, I think it's really powerful. Yes. So yes. It's, again, like it just goes back to that balance and loving all the parts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so you really got my ears percolated when you said tools and tactics, because I love me some tools and tactics. So will you share a little bit about like how to help us um, be more present and tools that we can start using right away? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I've got, um, I've got three free for everybody. Um, Nice. And again, I, you know, th- through my sharing of this, I really don't want to convey that people don't know how to be present or they're not present enough. Like that's not the intention by any means. And I think people these days, a lot of, you know, probably your listeners and a lot of conscious women like do understand presence. Um, but again, you know, it's, you know, it's one thing to set your timer and, and sit down and meditate and be present. And it's a, v- it's a very different thing to start really flexing these muscles when we're in conversations or with other people or, you know, in experiences, right? Like I think that presence tends to go a little bit out the window. So Mm -hmm. um, I'm just offering this as a way to kind of um, start to explore different ways of being and, and, and really with the intention of that, like, let's, uh, increase our confidence in our own presence and that it's enough <laughs> and that like, let's, yes. 
love ourselves enough and feel lovable enough that like we can actually, as you said, like start to do a little less and be a little Mm. more. Um, And at first this might feel very strange. So I'm also going to put that disclaimer out that as you first start to practice these things, (laughs) it could feel really weird and like not how you're used to being. So um, I just really invite to like, just check it out. Like use it as like a laboratory, you know, like, Oh, how are they responding? how do I feel? Mm. Right. Like just start to kind of note what the experience is. Um, yeah. So number one, like without a doubt, doorway into presence is slowing down. So, you know, this looks like slowing our breathing down, slowing how fast we talk, you know, how quickly we talk, like slowing our speech slowing our movements like it's just Mm -hmm. if we're moving quickly which most of us do because our society moves at an accelerated rate and technology has only made it go faster Mm -hmm. the doorway into presence is slowing down Mm. um so one of my mentors used to say like the slower you go the faster you get there and I never really got what she was saying. I was kind of like, uh-huh, sure. Um, but I didn't really have any <laughs> idea of what that meant. And I, and I still don't fully, but what I think it means is the slower we go, the faster we get really connected. Like the, almost like the faster we get here. Um, mm, like wow. there meaning like where we want to be and here meaning like presence. So and here is actually mm-hmm. where everything we need is, right? Yes. Like it's here. It's not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. It's here. So, you know, whenever I'm around someone who's sped up, and that could be for a variety of reasons, right? They could just be on autopilot and they're super speedy. They could be anxious. They could be afraid, right? Like, mm-hmm. but when I'm starting to notice, wow, they're talking really fast. They're breathing really quickly. Like, I can feel it, right? Because we're all always mirroring each other and co-regulating each other all the time. Anyway, mm-hmm. I'll just purposefully take a really long, slow, deep breath. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, and sometimes they can hear it. Sometimes I'll make it audible. <sighs> and most of the time they don't really say anything. Like most of the time they just keep talking. But really it's just that intention of like, I'm going to slow myself down so I don't actually get hooked into your pace and your speed. Because I prefer to be mm. present right now with you. You can be however you want. Yeah. I'm not going to, you know, I don't need to change you. But not right. for my own relaxation, like I'm going to take care of me in that moment. So mm-hmm. again, just notice kind of somatically and then also notice like if you are in a conversation with someone and your mind is already thinking about what am I going to say next? Right. That's another indication. Okay. I need to slow my roll. Mm-hmm. And we just take a deep breath, right? We just come, you know, feel our feet on the ground, whatever we need to do. Just like this moment's great. This moment's good. Mm-hmm. So that's step mm-hmm. one. That's good. And time does expand. Yeah. When we yeah. do that. <laughs> it does. It yeah. absolutely does. And you know, the more I've done this over the years, and I could be at a party, I could be, I and mean, I really could be anywhere. And I'll start to get this feedback from people like, oh, yeah, I just feel so calm when I'm around you. <laughs> like, You have such mm, a calming presence, so right? And it's like, oh, all mm-hmm. I'm doing, really, all I'm doing is, <sighs> right? Like just slowing myself. Wow. That's great. I love yeah. that. And I definitely felt that when we were in, together in person for oh. sure a lot of yeah. ease thank you yeah mm-hmm. yeah thank you <laughs> so step two um and again these steps might be reminiscent for people of kind of just even a, a meditative practice because it's all the same right but step two is we have to get quiet mm. so again 
it's one thing to do that on a meditation cushion. It's another thing to do that as we're going about or we're grocery shopping, right? We're like having dinner with our family, right? It's like, what does that actually mean? Um, it means that, like I mentioned before, we have this tendency that our mind is always going. So we're thinking about what we're going to say next. We're searching for the insightful response to offer. We're wanting to connect to that person and build empathy through sharing a personal story, right? Like these are just very natural human things. And they're not wrong. Mm -hmm. So please, you know, not <clears throat> wrong at all. We can move into that gear whenever we want. But to cultivate a more powerful presence and to create that relaxation we're talking about and that capacity to receive, we have to start to empty those thoughts out of our mind. We have to create spaciousness. So mm -hmm. when we begin to notice, okay, my mind's going, right? What am I going to say? And again, a lot of times this is tied to our value. Oh, if I'm not saying something insightful, if I'm not sharing something, if I'm not making the person laugh, if I'm not adding or contributing in this intellectual way, then I'm not enough in this moment, right? Like there's that kind of, I really think that most of us do have to varying degrees that feeling. If I'm not teaching mm -hmm. something, right? Like whatever it is. So in those moments, yeah. you know, it's really about practicing, okay, my value is just being here and fully listening and like fully just being here without that mm. mental, um, how do I want to put it? It's like kind of like a chess game, not quite, because it's not like we're trying to win, but you know, it's again, it's a lot of strategizing that's happening, which just takes mm -hmm. up a lot of mental energy. Wow. So yeah. this one's a little bit harder to do, but my, my offer, my invitation is to just sit with that person and kind of empty yourself out. Again, this is going to feel strange compared to what you normally do. And for those of you who know heart mm -hmm. math or other kind of breathing, you can always kind of breathe in and out of your heart space, right? To kind of get you out, just drop down out of the mm. mind. And then just kind of wait. And, and this quietness not only is on the inside of ourselves, but it's also on the outside. So like if there's a pause in the conversation, can we let it be? <laughs> I'm just laughing because that one's really yeah. hard for me. It's really hard for a that lot of us. Like the talk yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh gosh, you know, like I can't tell you, Sarah, how many times I've been in a conversation and my mind, it's like crickets in there. It's like, what am I going to say to this? Like, what? Like, it really, like, I don't uh -huh. know. And I really have to be like, let go of the fear. Like, let go of the insecurity, mm -hmm. like drop in, mm. like listen to them, right? Like my focus, because when, when we're thinking about what to say, when we're thinking about all that, where is our focus? You know, it's on wow. ourselves. It's not on the other person. And if we are more focused on ourselves than the other person, that we're not present. Mm -hmm. We're missing it, right? We're like actually yeah, missing, missing out. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking about my people in my life who do this well, who don't feel the need to fill up the space. And they're my favorite people mm. to talk to. I just find them to be amazing, <laughs> you know, and talk with and listen to. And they teach me how to be a better mm -hmm. listener. And that's an absolute goal of mine. I'm The talking, I've got that part <laughs> down. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the issue but that balance of the listening you know and Gabrielle Bernstein says um, a great little lesson that I'll add to what you're saying it's an acronym of the word wait and I use it all the time and it's why am mm. I talking <laughs> that's so good <laughs> That's so yeah, good. and then there's like a list of questions. And I don't remember all of them, but I, it's around the sense of like, is it necessary? Is it true? Is it kind? And I think there's another one. 
But normally I feel like what I have to say is not necessary. Like I just love the sound of my own voice. And I'm just like, blah, blah, blah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like that acronym has helped me a lot. Well, and what's so amazing too is like when we actually, when we dare to pause, like when we dare to sit in that silence, even for a beat longer than we might, like even for a millisecond, which might feel like an eternity. Then like whatever comes through from the empty silent space, we can trust more. Because we're that present, mm. like we're so listening, right? We're not thinking about what to say. We're not going to the next step. We're not coming from a place of proving our worth. And then from there, it's like, yes, we do get to express ourselves, but in a much more true and mm-hmm. powerful way. Yes. Yes. When you said that, I feel like that's really hit home for me about the worth. Because I feel like, you know, I know like my story has been like, I was always celebrated mm-hmm. for my looks. And I always was sitting there thinking, I have important Mm. things to say. Like I have value to my words. And so that kind of made me overemphasize that part of me. I feel like, you know, is like trying and wanting to prove my worth outside of physical, but based in what's going on in my mind. But I found that writing is a beautiful way for me to be able to do both, to be more quiet and better listener But to feel, you know, heard is to just write. And I don't even often share what I write. I just love to write just to get it out of my head. Yeah, beautiful practice. So that's a great. And I just want to jump back for a second, Sarah. Like, what what about these people who, you know, create that silence? Like you said, they're my favorite people to talk to. Like, Mm -hmm. why? Well, the first person I think of is my own personal coach. And he's a man and he, um, I felt like it was really healthy for me to have a male coach because there was the, the agreement is that there's not going to be any like flirtation or dating or, you know, that's like off the table. Um, and so I feel like there's extra value for me to be truly like heard and understood by a man that doesn't have any extra agenda. And I found what he does is like, even if he thinks I'm totally wrong, even if he like has a great retort, like he'll completely just be quiet the whole time I'm talking. And we have a system where when I am done talking, I say a ho so that he doesn't have to say like, are you done or whatever? I just can like keep going until I am done. Then I say a ho And then he reiterates back to me what I said. And the first time we did this practice, I was just bawling. I was like, oh, my Mm. God. Like, thank you for understanding Mm. me. Thank you for hearing me. And it was just, it was very, um, it was a nuance. Like, it was something I hadn't experienced really with with a man. With women, I experienced that all the time. But with a man, it was really powerful. So I feel like. Like to answer your question, there was a few parts to that, just being understood, um, having no outside agenda, um, not, and feeling like I had the space and time to um, like express without being like confined around that. Yeah, that touches me so deeply. So thank you for sharing. And I, um, I think that when people feel like that the other person honors and respects them enough to just let them express how they need to, like without restriction, without agenda, like you said, without, you know, just freely, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, it's like a trust, Mm -hmm. like, Oh, I feel your trust in me. I feel your trust in this moment. I feel you're allowing me to be exactly who I am. And it's such a gift. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> there was one other thing I wanted to add to your step two. Oh, please. Add away. Because <laughs> we were kind of talking about communicating with men also. So I did this online course about understanding men. And I'll put the name of the teacher somewhere online. I can't think of her right now, unfortunately. But 
she was teaching about this being quiet thing and how like women tend to like ask men a question and then like within like 10 to six seconds we're like and they don't answer we like think we're being helpful by giving them like <laughs> options <Yeah. laughs> it sounds like Alison Armstrong Maybe to me mad. yeah yes, thank you. Thank yeah you. I, I love her yes, yeah Armstrong. I love that you knew yeah. I listened to a lot of her you. stuff so <laughs> yes me too I love her little voice it's so cute and she's just like we're not being helpful <laughs> <laughs> they didn't forget to answer you know <laughs> she's like they are thinking let them think and this was huge for me especially I don't, I'm not currently in the dating world I have politely exited mm. myself from that zone for a year at least and um, it's been great by the way and but when I was in the dating world I found that to be amazing just to like shut up and, le- and the longer I shut up, the more they would devolve. Yes. And I'm like, wow, yes. Yes. you had all that to say. Who knew? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's like they can, it's like, and, and I, and I think this is true for everybody, for men and women. It's like, they're allowed to sink deeper in the space. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And more can come, right? Because really, I believe that healing is just, you know, whatever wants to emerge is going to start emerging. And that creates a healing moment, whether it's like this profound, huge thing or this micro moment. But that's what healing is. It's just the allowing of whatever needs to kind of start coming to come. And it needs and it needs space to do that. Um, so yeah. I love that you gave that example, too. You know, like, yeah, because we can use this anywhere. We can use this on a date. We can use this with our with our coworkers and our employees and how we run meetings. And I mean, there's so many um Mm-hmm. arenas in which we can start to bring these practices into yeah yeah wow can't wait to go out there and be quiet <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you girl like after a while it's gonna feel like such a vacation like it's gonna you know it might feel really awkward at first and then you're just gonna start feeling like you can put your hands behind your head and just lay back <laughs> awesome it's great it's awesome okay what well, you said there were three and I kept you on number two for yeah. a long time because that was a good um, one yeah we'll quickly go to number I'm three curious. which is basically I mean again these are all connected so you know you'll see the integration of the slowing down the getting quiet and allowing quiet and then the third one is what I call dropping into our hearts and getting out of our heads Mm. And we've already talked about this, but again, it's just becoming more aware of our agendas or the thoughts in our head um, that say that, you know, I need to be seen in a certain way. I need to be received in a certain way so that I feel good about myself. Or it could be, am I already thinking about the end result? Right. So let's say you're even, let's say, like you sit down to meditate. (laughs) Because I think this creeps into meditation too. And let's say you're going mm-hmm. to sit down and you've got your timer for 20, 30 minutes and you're and, and there's this agenda of like, I better tap into my truth. I better gain some clarity. <laughs> I better, you know what I mean? I better be buzzing all over my yes. body with presence, right? It's an agenda. It's a result. Okay, intuition. It's your turn to speak yeah. up. <laughs> yeah. I better get an answer to this question or a sign <laughs> or a message from the angels or whatever. And I say this because I do it too, you know? So again, like anytime we, we notice that there's an end result to something, either about ourselves or someone else, that's when we get to come down out of our heads and into our hearts. And in the course I teach, we talk a lot about this. The mind, it's brilliant. It's wonderful. It has a role, but there's always going to be discernment in the mind. There's always going to be a level of good, bad, helpful, not helpful, right? It's just, that's just what it does. It's Mm -hmm. its job. Again, not wrong. The heart doesn't do that. The heart has this infinite, amazing capacity to just allow everything as it is. That's what love is to me. It's this complete allowing that something doesn't need to happen. 
right? It's like this yeah. moment is perfect as exactly as it is. Yeah. And so mm. again, with practice, with exploration, please be gentle, everyone who wants to try this stuff. You know, it's like the minute that we we become aware, okay, I have an agenda. I have a good, bad, right, wrong, helpful, not helpful, productive, not productive, whatever the dichotomy is you're having for this experience, right? Whatever the result that you're wanting to have happen is just, again, like find your own personal way. And in the course I teach, we teach various, you know, other ways to do this. But for now, whatever way you like and works for you, just come into that heart space mm. of love, of gratitude, of like perfection, of whatever it is for you. That's like, truly this moment is okay and doesn't need to be any different. And I don't need to be any different. Mm. I'm sure glad I'm recording you. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. It's really profound. I feel like the feeling of anxiety, which is such a humongous issue with so many people right now, really stems from that piece that you just said not being in place. I know, I mean, I used to suffer from major anxiety attacks and it really all stemmed from this isn't where I'm supposed to be right now. You know, this is all wrong. This is, I made a mistake or something. I'm off track. But now that I'm like almost 40, I can look back and be like, okay, I can, I'm old enough to say, oh, 20 years ago, oh, 15 years ago, like, and look at how everything really was perfect and how all the lessons I accumulated in those years are serving me today and be like, okay, I'm going to trust that that's the same for this moment too. Yes. Yes, because again, like when we're, when we're truly purely present, we actually don't need a reason, an explanation, a justification, a validation, right? Like if you can remember times that you were so present, maybe you were dancing or maybe you were at a concert or maybe you're making love or like eating amazing food or being with friends or like being on the beach or like, you know, like there are dozens and dozens of moments where I'm sure you were like, I am so present right now. Or you're in the ocean and there's a dolphin or like, you know, and in those moments, it's like all of that. It's like, that all goes away. That like need for anything to be other, you know? And so is it harder to find those in moments of stress or challenge or grief? Like, of course, of course. But the more we practice this stuff, you know, and the trust, um, the, it, it does get a little bit easier. It really, really does. Mm-hmm. I agree. You mentioned briefly this course that you teach. Is this connected to your transformation coaching that you do? Um it's it's part of the of the work I do, and thank you for allowing me to just speak to it really quickly. So yeah, I'd love to. Hear. Um, oh, it's so kind. Thank you. Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so I work with people one on one in a private uh, practice of mine, and I'm so grateful to be able to work remotely with people so all over the world. So if if anyone out there is just feeling like they would like some space held for them or some more support right now, I just you know obviously would love to connect with you to to see how I can serve you on your journey at this time. The course itself is called Holding Space for Transformation. And that is through the Center for Transformational Coaching and Living, although you can get there through my website or my Instagram. Um, And really, this is an eight-week course. We're starting in September. I invite anyone who Mm. identifies as a healer, wants to participate in kind of individual, collective, and global transformation, who just already knows they're a space holder and a guide on this wonderful wild path and would like some more support and a toolbox for the journey. Um, I would love to have you Mm. in class and we start September and um, we can, you know, reach out to me and we can, we can connect around the course anytime just to kind of talk about it. If people are interested. Amazing. Gosh, darn it. I can think of like 500 people that will, that I know personally that will love this and the, um, 
links to connect with Rachel indeed will be in the show notes as always to make it easy for y'all. And you know, what's really cool. I love that you said all around the world because something that's cool about um, having a podcast is I can see on my phone where people are in the world who are listening. So I see you, I see you guys out there (laughs) and it's literally everywhere like places I have to look up and be like, Oh, I've never heard of, where is that? You know, I mean, it's everywhere. And, um, I just feel like it's such a beautiful tool to be able to connect with people who are living a really different reality than I am and are in a different environment. And, Oh, it's, it's so beautiful. It just feels like, um, magic. Mm. And your podcast is magic, Sarah. And I, you know, it's, it's pretty much the way I reconnected with you in this last little while. And I've been listening and you are, um, gosh, you're so inspiring. Um, and you know, earlier when you're talking about your lack of perfectionism, I was like, do you teach me so much in that as I begin to share more of my voice in the world? So, um, I'm so grateful. Oh my gosh. That makes me so happy. (laughs) That's absolutely my intention. That's really it. You just summed it up. I just, Every time I push this record button, it's the prayer is to have people just feel inspired to share their own gifts and their own voice and to be themselves. You know, and the the, the title of the podcast is kind of cheeky, but really it gets it's deep. <laughs> it's, a, it's a trick. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's actually really deep. And um, I to hear someone like you who is facilitating such uh, like. I can just think of the trickle down effect because healers in this, oh my gosh, how much are they needed right now? Mm -hmm. And if they're not supported, I know if a girlfriend of mine is a therapist and she'll come down, we have these little sweet mama, like evening lawn blanket times here and people who are walking their dogs and whatever will just like, not people, it's all happens to be women, but we'll just like plop down and then their kids will all play in the tree nearby and we'll just kind of decompress and visit. And I love when we do this and whenever she, you know, sits on the blanket, she's just sharing how, you know, she's having back to back zoom calls um, Mm -hmm. with people who are like really freaking out. And, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, wow, I am like, amazed by that she's so um like and she has like you said these practices that really help her to drop in and and stay um like connected to her why and what heals her along the way but she is definitely going to be hearing about your course and you and this episode because like they're just thinking of us one person and how many out there are are in need of that support so thank you so much for sharing who you are and I'm just thinking back, how long ago was that when we did that girls camp? Was that like eight years ago? I want to say like 2013, like 2013. 2013. Feeling, or yeah, around, or, or 14, maybe? <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was, yeah, sometime around then. Yeah, so that's like nine or 10 years ago. Oh my God, I'm like doing math on my fingers over here. So wow, that's a long time ago, which is amazing because I'm thinking back to you know, that week and just spending that time with you and you are in such a place of um, discovery and transformation yourself. Mm -hmm. And you had a lot of questions of like, what am I going to do next? And that was really the question is like, what, where would you have me go? What would you have me do? You know, who would, what would you have me say and to whom? And that was really your like vibe, just curious and open. And i just want to honor you in this moment for like all these years later just and like you said, gently stepping into that role with so much compassion and and presence and understanding and awareness. Like as Luna would say, you're very conscious. She has this like, <laughs> in her vocabulary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just decides if someone's being conscious or not, and um, you're being very conscious, Rachel. And Thank I just you, thank you for that. Thank I have the you. biggest smile on my face. Thank <laughs> you. Um, could I maybe just end with this Elizabeth Lesser quote I sent you? Because I just think oh, it's so yes. good. And yes. if anybody out there is still not quite sure that they can be confident in their presence, like I just think this one really hits home. Um, so is that okay with you? I would love that. That's perfect. 
Okay, so if, for those of you who don't know, Elizabeth Lesser founded the Omega Institute, which is, um, I think, on the East Coast somewhere. It's a pretty yes. well-known spiritual kind of center. And she was uh, being interviewed on Oprah on a Super Soul Sunday, and she said, Woo-woo. "We all we all struggle with feeling like we have to be somebody, do something, say something, when really our souls, our golden radiant core, is enough." And that's what people want. They don't want you to impress them with your wisdom and they don't even want you to do anything for them. Just come be with me. Be your true self, your genuine self. I just want the real deep you. It's fire. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> so good. Oh, that's so good. Oh, wow. And the Omega Institute is a place that's created a lot of healing and joy and, and transformation for people as well. So couldn't have come from a better person. Wow. Thank you so much, Rachel. You're amazing. Thank you for Thank you, Sarah. You are too. I feel so lucky. I feel like I should be paying you. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I'm smiling ear to ear. You made my day and my week. And um, I hope to, yeah, connect with you very soon. We will indeed. Okay. Indeed. Thank you so much and be blessed. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Every play of this show means the world to me. Thank you for your time and for listening. I'd love to hear from you now. Questions and comments are welcomed at showitoffpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for subscribing to the Show It Off podcast. And if you have a moment, if you could leave a review on iTunes, it would help other people to find this message of confidence. You could also help someone build confidence by texting this episode to at least one person now. Being self-loving means being authentic, bold, and confident. So shamelessly and unapologetically show it off.